Good tea. It's good tea. When I got my Mars Hydro TS1000 LED light, I set out to do three things. Grow a pepper plant with peppers, grow chamomile, and grow mint so that I could eat a pepper and make mint and chamomile tea. I got everything I wanted. It grew fruit, it grew a pepper plant, it grew the chamomile, and it grew mint. It grew leafy green. So it can grow whatever you want. It's fantastic for that. But I learned a lot of lessons along the way because right now I have aphid infested chamomile, I have a mint plant taking over the world and a pepper plant that is not coming back. It's dead. I'm calling it dead. It's dead to me. What I'm going to do to the aphids is I'm going to take these chamomile plants outside after this video. At the end of this video, stay tuned for this, and I'm going to burn them with a 44,000 BTU weed burner. It might also kill the chamomile, but I think it will get rid of the aphids for sure this time. Before we go outside and burn these things to death with the weed burner, you see that bottle of hydroponics solution right there, nutrients? If you've seen many of my other videos, you'll notice that almost in every video I have that bottle of hydroponic nutrients on top of my light. It was on my fluorescent light, and now it's on top of my LED light. The question is, and the contest is, I want you to leave a comment down below, why is that bottle of hydroponic nutrients on top of the light? Leave a comment below if you think you know the answer, and to understand how we got here, let's back it up. Ah, the pepper plant. Oh, the pepper plant looks like this. It doesn't look good. Take a look at it. Judge for yourself. It doesn't look good. I did get three peppers off it, but I know it's capable of so much more. What happened was I got aphids on the chamomile and they were sucking the life out of my flowers and they were, they didn't really hurt the mint. And I don't know if they were hurting the peppers, but it was just, they were killing it. And aphids are just gross and I hate them. I tried dish soap and water, and I think I got that a little too strong because that mostly killed the chamomile. It mostly killed the aphids. Actually, it did a really good job killing the aphids. Um, and it sort of did this to my pepper plant. I don't know if there's any recovery for it. This is the craziest thing you're ever going to see in a hydroponics video. We're going to cut the... Actually, you know, no, that's not true. Jeb Gardner's a lunatic. But this is the craziest thing you're ever going to see me do. I'm going to cut this thing back, and I'm going to hope that it grows back in an effort to save it. I'm going to sacrifice the peppers that are on it, and... Um, yeah, that's what's, that's what's going to happen. So let's cut it down and hold our breath. Right there. So here we are, aphid infested chamomile, a ginormous mint plant, and a dead pepper plant. I got what I wanted, but I learned some lessons along the way. What are those lessons you might ask? One, aphids are really hard to get rid of. If you bring plants in from outside, soil the hydro will work, but you bring in with it risks, disease, insects, uh, dirt, I don't, you name it. Bringing stuff in from the outside into a clean hydroponic environment introduces risk. What I wanted to do, my wife vetoed it, I wanted to take I wanted to bring in ladybugs because ladybugs are voracious aphid killers. But she's like, aphid, I don't want ladybugs in the basement. So I said, well, after the ladybugs are done, we'll bring in something that eats ladybugs, tree frogs. Tree frogs eat ladybugs, according to Google. And she said, well, then we have tree frogs. I said, well, also according to Google, squirrels have been known to eat tree frogs. So we'll bring in a few squirrels. And she's like, well, then you have squirrels in the basement. I said, well, I have an acorn on my oak tree outside. I'll just lure them out of the basement with the acorns when we're done. Problem solved vetoed. So since that plan didn't pan out, we're going to use the weed burner and we're going to destroy the aphids once and for all. Um, lesson two, the ebb and flow is still my favorite way to grow because I can plant stuff in there. I can take things out. You saw I had wildflowers in there. I had the pepper plant. I swapped in new plants. I took out the old plants. It's just awesome. It's big and full and easy to grow in. Lesson three, the LED light, it works great. Does it work better than my T5 light? Maybe. It's not as bright as my T5 light, but it does have a fuller full spectrum, if that makes sense. It has far red light and has ultraviolet light, something you can only do in LEDs because you can put, you can kind of tune the, the spectrum to what you want it to be based on which LEDs you put in the unit. 
Um, I'll put a link to the study that I read or watched the video of below from a fellow up at Utah State where he describes the benefits that plants can get from far red light, something that you can't get with a traditional fluorescent light. So you get a fuller, fuller spectrum with this particular LED light and others, but this one, lesson three, this thing's got some downsides. The spill being one of them. It spills so much light out of the sides. I had to create kind of a makeshift reflecting tent around this thing. If you had a, like a grow tent, you'd probably be better off because you could recapture some of that light and reflect it back onto the plants where it can do some good instead of spilling out all over the room and being lost and being wasted. Uh, this other thing that's kind of a downside is it gets pretty hot. It gets way hotter than my LED, my fluorescent lights. I have to put a fan on it to kind of keep it cool and keep the air moving around. And lastly, the dimmer switch on this thing is stupid. Like you have to jam a screwdriver in the top, twist it very carefully and dim the light, which I was unable to do to do tonight. I've always been able to do it before from other videos, but tonight I couldn't do it. And I don't know why, because the dimmer, probably because the dimmer is stupid. So other than that, great light, 139 bucks. You really can't go wrong. It grew everything I wanted it to do. Leafy greens, mint, flowers, chamomile, and fruit, pepper plants. So it's got the full, it does it all. It does it all. Lastly, I was reminded of the fact that when things go wrong, it's when you learn. When things are, when everything is right and everything is fine, you're not forced to pay attention to the things that are, you know, you're not forced to pay attention to things. You oftentimes don't learn as much as you do from failure. So while I wouldn't necessarily consider this a failure, I had lots of things go wrong and I did lots of things wrong that I will not repeat. And I, hopefully I've learned from that problem. And now, without further ado, 44,000 British thermal units of propane versus the aphid.